It finally happened. After more than 900 days and two devastating injuries to Clay Thompson's legs, he made his triumphant return against the long and hungry Cleveland Cavaliers. There was lots to go through, plenty of plays to analyze, and all I can say is that if this is the beginning of the comeback process for Clay, then the ending should leave Warriors fans ecstatic. After numerous posts while on his boat, and then doing his best Captain and Tennille impersonation, how could you not be cheering for Clay as he had to endure not just an ACL tear in the 2019 Finals, but then blowing out his Achilles in a pickup game while prepping for last season? And the hometown fans didn't have to wait long. This is a clever set where they run a double ball screen across the top for Wiggins, and notice how this is going to shape up for a Steph pin down on the left side. But Clay expertly rubs Stevens off the Porter screen and finds an opening. However, Jared Allen helps, forcing Clay to shorten his left step and then pull his finger roll back into a floater to barely get it out of Allen's reach and dropping it perfectly through the rim. Here is the same play. And I'd like to see Wiggins get further to the right side so his man can't help off so easily to contest what would have been a wide open shot. This is tough for a righty going to his right. Notice how the right foot plants slightly behind the left, requiring a lot of in-air turn to get alignment, and Clay is long with this one. Here's a sign of how his absence can make him out of sync. He's supposed to either cut through or set a pin down for Curry to get the handoff from Looney. Instead, he breaks it off in an aggressive way to go get the ball, getting in Curry's way, who then throws a bad pass over his shoulder that never had a chance. Clay would have been better relocating to the top to give him an easier target. And I got a little nervous seeing him trip, but this was due to his left foot contacting the bottom of Stevens' foot, nothing related to his injuries. This time, they put him in the right corner where he has natural alignment to the rim on any catch on that side. We get treated to beautiful ball movement as Clay realizes the lowest man had to fully rotate him. This should be a shot by JTA, and credit to Stevens for sticking like Lou to Clay, who has shown he won't be shy no matter the shot clock. Clay is one of the only guys who can actually be a little consistent with his three point shot when not dipping, and it didn't help that the pass was off target and a little high. Without a good rhythm dip, it's no surprise to me that it's short. I was a little surprised the Cavs didn't go at him on defense more to see how his mobility and timing were. But they do set a cross screen on him to take advantage of Markinen's height, and Clay simply takes the foul, not wanting to find out what the post up would be like. But if you want to find out what it's like to witness the Splash Brothers in person, or any other amazing NBA duo this season, then you have to check out SeatGeek. I got primo Harry Styles tickets for my daughter using the SeatGeek app, and you always know what kind of a deal you're getting with the great selection of seats that SeatGeek finds from all over the internet. If you use my code BBALL, you can save 20 bucks off your first purchase, so do what John Wooden said. Be quick, don't hurry. And use SeatGeek to find all your tickets for concerts, sporting events, or the theater. And that way, you'll have more energy to go see your favorite shows. And it's the energy transfer that isn't quite there yet when recovering from an Achilles tear. And I suspect Clay won't get the kind of lift off the ground he's used to for a little while, leading to tougher shots, especially under duress. It's good to see his right foot handling so many explosive plants, but the fadeaway is short, as he needs to recalibrate his mechanics as he gets back into shape. On this hop into the three, we get a beautiful rhythm dip, although it's slightly shortened for my taste. As a result, there's a drop in power and it misses short. This looks to me like the over-anxiousness of a guy who hadn't played for so long. He was rushing his shots, and based on his immediate reaction, he knew it was short as well. While Clay can't beat Markinen on this drive, it's worth noting that blowing by guys off the dribble was never his forte before the injuries. Another hard right foot plant gets him going in the other direction, a good sign, and he added more arc to try and drop in this fadeaway based on his last shot from this area. But again, the power in his legs is lacking so early in the process and it's short. Here's two consecutive foot plants with no apparent pain or discomfort. Another good sign that the rehab got the Achilles strong enough to endure some of the most common footwork he'll use. On this fadeaway jump shot, it requires him to plant the right foot and that leg needs to provide the basis for the power into the jump. It's no surprise, this one was way short as he's simply not ready to begin elevating like he used to. On this pinaway, the defense is so concerned with the shot that it forces a switch. 
I'm sure we all raised our eyebrows a little, waiting to see what might happen in this ISO situation. But I'm sure no one was expecting this monster smash over two players at the rim. He jumps off the left leg, and we've seen time and again that players who properly rehab ACL injuries come back as better athletes. The landing was a little scary, but he properly gets both feet down to the ground to absorb the shock as evenly as possible. For a guy who doesn't normally get a lot of dunks, this was the highlight of the night. Being out this long leads to rustiness, including with the old feet work. As Clay establishes his left foot as the pivot, you can see it straddling the lane line, but then slides it 12 inches to try and get more space from the defender. The ref was all over it. The one real closeout we got from him all night was on Stevens here. The good news was that it was on the left side of the floor, so on a baseline drive he'd push off on his stronger left foot. But the bad news is that he doesn't have the lateral quickness and explosion yet, as Stevens goes right by him for a dunk of his own. The Warriors put Wiggins in the traditional clay role of guarding the other team's lead ball handler. And I don't know why the Cavs didn't do this way more often, force a switch and let Garland go at him. Clay does a good job to stay in front and contests well enough to entice a miss. The one issue with forcing that switch on the Cavs side is that it could lead to a mismatch when the Warriors come down, as they try to take advantage down low. Credit Garland for the deflection, but more troubling footwork by Clay. He establishes the left foot as the pivot foot and not only slides it a teeny bit here, but then completely travels by lifting it off the ground and putting it back down in a dirk leg attempt. Perhaps he knew he walked and it led to an awful miss. Here's why having Steph and Clay together is a nightmare for defenses. Porter drives baseline and forces a full rotation by the lowest guy. This means Chetty has to split the difference between the two weak side spot up shooters. Wiggins is elite on catch and shoot shots and Osmond slides down in that direction. Garland would normally be next in line to rotate over to the shooter, but he ain't gonna leave Steph. And that means Clay Thompson, of all people, gets a wide open three ball. Telling us that at the very least, I can do that. Also, notice how low the dip is on the shot. This is where the power is generated and something he can do when he's this wide open. On this help rotation, you can see he just doesn't have the same lift. So instead of cleanly blocking this from behind, he ends up contacting the wrist and earning the foul. Another example of how the Splash Brothers make each other better. See how Chetty is guarding Clay by whispering in his ear? Other players in this position might at least show a hand or try to stunt at Steph to stop this drive. As a result, Steph gets right to the hoop for the nice inside hand finish. The Warriors defense has a very high IQ, even when Draymond doesn't play. The Cavs wanted to attack the slow-footed Looney in the pick and roll, but Clay pre-switches him out of there and Steph pushes Garland to the left wing where Clay can pick him up. Fantastic small steps to keep in front and then check this out. A small bound onto a right foot solo landing, then leaping off that same surgically repaired Achilles foot to block the shot. This is very impressive and an awful foul call as the replay showed this to be clean, leading Clay to get unusually upset as we're used to seeing him much more mild mannered on the court. They started the second half with some excitement, for me at least, by having Clay set a ball screen for Curry. Curry sucks Clay's man to him for a beat. This will probably be a three point shot at some point, but Clay uses the fake handoff to get down to the baseline. Again, he's not beating anyone off the dribble, but check the floating, twisting, high arcing shot that drops clean through. Can you hear me nodding my head? When playing on a surgically repaired Achilles tendon, it's important not to strain it unnecessarily. When I caught this step back with his toes in line with his heel too far behind his body and in full dorsiflexion. Watch the reaction. The knee buckles to remove the load off of it and this is a little scary. He does recover to play excellent defense and harass his man into a contested miss. More rustiness as he comes around another curl from the left side and I think he wanted to go back to JTA but for some reason changes his mind after already getting into the air. He had Wiggins open in the corner but just tosses it into the stands. Here was a chance to see where we really stand in his comeback, an isolation out top against a bigger and longer defender that has shown the ability to play decent defense this year. Again, he's not going to beat anybody off the dribble, but check how the right foot withstands an extremely aggressive foot plant with all his weight on it before hopping back into a fadeaway. This one goes straight in. And off of this turnover, we've seen this thousands of times. Clay running right to the three point line, waiting patiently for the pass and a wide open three that rips the net. Check how he times the bottom of the dip, which gets to the waist, with the right foot plant into the jump. Perfect rhythm, perfect shot. 
Being indecisive is also another result of being out for so long. It's perfectly natural, and Clay isn't sure what to do in the lane. The turnaround is again short as he doesn't have momentum to help propel him into the air. Here's another sign that he's going to really help the defense. He spots the mismatch down low and is there to cleanly block this out of Markinen's hand. Perfect. Coach Kerr put Curry on the bench and left Clay out there with Wiggins and Poole to see how this looks. They cleverly get into a horn set with a pin away on the weak side. This was a tough one as the dribble bounced at the same exact time as the right foot plant. This makes for a rush shot to get the ball to its set point and out in order to sink with the legs jumping. As a result, this one is short too. They uncorked this beauty of a set from the out of bounds play. Clay hands off to Poole, then snaps back around the Looney screen. Allen has to step up to prevent the jump shot, and it creates the opening for Looney to get the strong jump hook. What will also hurt defenses against the Warriors is how good Clay is at early action. Built into their offense is his quick pin away, which allows him to operate with an empty side of the floor. It's bottled up initially, but the next progression is the ball screen, and going to Clay's left, he can hop into the shot with natural alignment to the hoop, and this one is clean. The difference Clay makes on the weak side is the positioning of his defender. You can see Stevens unwilling to rotate to help. Now, Clay is a split second late filling the corner on his pocket pass, but because of the fumble, it ends up being perfect. But this is one of the hardest threes you can get, moving completely laterally into the short corner with hardly any room for your feet. When he starts hitting this shot, you know he's completely back. And on this quick hop into the shot, he's drifting to his left quite a bit, as his legs aren't quite seaworthy just yet. But either way, this was a great start for a heartwarming story of perseverance and overcoming adversity. Oh, and if it continues on this path, that adversity will be felt by every other team in the NBA by the end of the year.